Hello guys. So this is our last discussion on quality control in our laboratory management. Uh, so we will focus today on the procedures. So how we ensure quality in your blood banking section or department. Sana I wish that I could discuss this all, okay? Kasi these are all part of your QC. However, I'm just going to choose a few, okay? Quality control and proficiency testing that to discuss. But our national reference laboratory, guys, assess also our blood banking units kung accurate ba yung test natin for screening of hepatitis B, HIV, internal and external audit. So, check ng internally ng chief medical technologist, yung laboratory, yung pathologist, and also other department could audit the laboratory depending on the on the rules of the hospital or the laboratory, personnel and organization, guys. Kasama to sa QC. So, how does the organization flow? How do we document? How we audit one another? Personnel, how often they are trained? Yung mga leaves nila? Yung how are they compensated? Kasama yun sa quality control. Their time, their work shifts, guys. So, sabi, so standard says that when the personnel is working too much too much hours in the day, it, they're more prone to uh, errors, premises, the environment, equipments, and materials. Dapat i-ensure yung environment. Uh, okay, yung condition, equipments that we buy, the materials that we buy. Document, we document everything. The the units that had positive results on HIV, we document how we dispose them, we document the units that we already screened and the units that were expired, ganyan, or the current inventory of our units, ilan ang blood type O, ilan ang blood type B, may O negative ba tayo? Lahat yan din document how we process the blood, yung mga standard operating procedure natin if there are complaints and component recall. Yan. So may sinoling component kasi nagka-transfusion reaction yung patient. Investigation of errors and accidents are all part of the QC. However, today, guys, we will only focus on four, four parts okay, of our of our blood banking okay so sabi dito quality safety and efficacy of the products transfused is the results of many steps so we focus tayo today sa how do we ensure use quality control in the selecting of donors and how we com uh, collect blood how we prepare our components components store them and transport them and how do we ensure that our equipments and our agents in the laboratory are a okay or, or if they are working efficiently. So, simulan natin sa QC in donor selection. <clears throat> Number one, the health and safety of the donor as well as the recipient must be safeguarded. Hindi ba, may priority tayo, guys. May priority tayo is to promote the health of our patients to whomever, kung sino man may encounter natin, we want to promote their health. So, kung donor man sila, they want to donate blood, okay? We, we need to set a set of criteria or a set of standards to ensure that they are also protected, okay? Example, may anemic pala, may undiagnosed anemia yung pasyente, ganyan, or uh, the woman is having their menstruation, ganyan, or they already have iron deficiency anemia. So, as much as possible, we don't get blood from them because it will endanger their health, okay? They are pregnant, diba? So, we, we will not endanger their health. And the health of the recipient, the one who will receive the transfused blood, so we ensure that the donor is really a voluntary donor, guys. Talagang, uh, nag kasi guys, uh, most of the time, yung mga paid donors, they are more highly at risk to, uh, high, at risk for blood, bloodborne diseases. Usually, yung mga paid donors, kung baga yung ginagawa nilang business nila or yung pagdodonate ng blood, ganyan, more risk 
more risk sila. Okay. So, talagang pinapromote natin is a voluntary blood donation. Ano, bukas sa puso. Okay. So, example, ito yung mga blood, yung mga potential blood donor natin, as much as possible for the last 72 hours, hindi sila nag-take na aspirin or analgesics, amoyin ng uh, nagsiselect ng donor, baka they had alcohol, do not eat greasy food, one hour um, that you did not smoke, they should be well hydrated and they have sleep a lot. And so, yung mga those who weren't able to sleep properly, let's protect their health, okay? Health of the donor and the recipient. Number two, only individuals in good health should be accepted, okay? So, malaki talagang, uh, dito pa lang sa screening of blood donors is mahalaga na. Why? Because you want to prevent to promote health. We want to prevent wastage as much as possible kasi binabayaran na yung mga uh, yung effort natin na mag-collect ng blood tapos yung container yung blood trans, um, blood blood bags that we use di ba? Sayang naman yun. Regularly review the selection criteria, making sure that there is no discrimination. Okay, so guys, we don't discriminate LGBTQIA. Okay, welcome silang mag donate ng blood. However, uh, deferred, hindi pwedeng mag donate ng blood those who have uh, unprotected sex, especially man to man. Okay, so high risk kasi yun sa HIV. Okay, so kung LBGTQA sila, okay lang. Pero if they, kung, kung, kung hindi sila nakikipagsek sa ano, male to male, okay, okay, okay. Pero if they're having sex, if they have risky, unprotected sex, hindi sila pwedeng mag-donate, okay? Because study shows they are at risk to bloodborne diseases, okay? We need to revisit it kung applicable ba sa locality. Number four, prospective donors' health status and medical history should be evaluated for each donation on the day of donation prior to blood collection. And we need a uh, help of a doctor. Yeah. And sometimes you need you the the one who is screening for donor should be trained well. Okay, kung walang doctor. Okay, next. Nakatakat to. Nakatip yung number five. Wait lang, babaan natin konti. Tatakpan ng sa may nakatakip. Okay. So, the BTS, the Blood Transfusion Service, should provide appropriate donor information and simple donor questionnaires. So the questionnaires must be easily answered by the prospective donor for health and risk assessment and obtain the donor's information consent to blood donation. And dapat guys, we could have health and risk assessment. Are they dapat the questionnaire is very applicable in assessing if they are at risk for HIV, hepatitis B, malaria, so my history of travel ba sila, or they are fond of sabihin natin unsafe aesthetic services. Example, baka nagpapaglutad drip sila na illegal na glutad drip. They're using, uh, they're sharing needles or using needles if they are drug users, ganyan. So, dapat uh, magaling mag-communicate there's a good communication between the staff. The staff should be trained well so as to, kunyari, naaamoy niya kung amoy alak, ganyan. So, dapat good rin sa pag i yung staff, okay? The BTS, the Blood Transfusion Service, has a duty of care to provide counseling to all deferred donors. Like, ang, ang alam ko isa sa talagang Commonly, common reason kung bakit nade-defer ang donors is example is hypertension guys. So, uh, maganda rin i-educate na don't work na wag silang ma-disappoint, okay? Wag silang ma-disappoint kasi we want them to return 
and donate again. Okay, so bumalik sila. So, ma'am, kung okay na yung high blood mo, yan, eh, so pwede kang bumalik. Yan. We need to still encourage them. So, continuous training for the staff. Okay, so napakalaga ng first part of donor selection. QC in blood collection naman. Okay, so now we are now collecting the, the blood component. So, the quality system must be designed to assure quality and safety to ensure donor and staff safety <coughs> and there would be less wastage. Okay? So, as much as possible, dapat uh, walang bloodborne disease, na-screen na yan, na-screen na yan sa interview pa lang, preliminary screening to ensure both the safety of the staff and the donor. Number two, all processes must be So, dapat nga, number one, meron pang confidentiality, di ba? Anything that happened will be confidential. But in the in our practice, guys, <clears throat> health professional, dapat confidentiality is the norm. Okay? Hindi natin pinag-dismissan yung mga pasyente natin. <clears throat> uh, everything should be kept secret. Okay? So, walang names. Number three, records should be kept for each activity, documentation. Number four, area for collection must be adequate. So, it should be... So, notice dito. <laughs> Wala kang confidentiality. Area for collection must be adequate with suitable equipment and services kasi siguro mass, mass blood donation drive. Area for collection must be adequate, suitable equipment and services. So, guys... Mapu pag mapurol ang needle, hindi yung papasok agad, hindi smooth ang pag-collect. So, quality yung mga blood bags. Must ensure that sample tubes and blood bag are from the same donor, which are uniquely labeled and linked to the donor's record to allow full blood product traceability. Yan, everything should be well labeled. Lahat sila may naka-assign na unique, unique code. Kasi number-number na lang yan. Donor identification assessment of eligibility to donate should take place before each donation. Yan. So before the, 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 for before the medic extracting their blood, uh, allowing the needle to enter the veins, yan, talong niya muna ulit. Ensure the identification. Two times, three times, ilang beses ulit. The donor should be re-identified prior to venipuncture. Number eight, appropriate preparation of the venipuncture site. So, dapat aseptic technique. Okay? Number nine, collection system should be sterile and used in accordance to the manufacturer's instruction. Okay? So, what's the recommended uh, use of the manufacturer? Yun lang ang gamit. Okay? Number ten, check should be made before use to ensure that a collection system is not damaged or contaminated, okay? So, na hindi na buksan to make sure that all the labels are sealed, okay? At ikaw magbubukas. So, dapat kung may nabuksan ka na needle na, kasi that happens, yan, ikaw rin dapat gagamit noon, okay? Do not endorse it to other people and huwag kang magre-receive ng endorsement, oh, friend, ito nabuksan ko pero hindi ko nagamit. As much as possible, ako I suggest don't use it, Okay? So, kung ikaw alam mo na, na ikaw nagbukas, yun. So, ikaw na lang gumamit. Huwag mo na-endorse sa iba. Okay. Number 11, a system for donor vigilance and management of adverse reaction. So, we're taking care of the health of the donor. Okay. Related to blood donation must be in place. Yan. Hindi ko alam kung totoo to. Pero may ka-intern daw ako na instead of the basilic vein that the that we should na gusto niyang itirahin, tusukin. Guys, basilic artery daw yung natu natusok niya kaya biglang nag-glue daw yung uh, arm ng pasyente. Yan. So, we need to protect the health of the donor. Yan. Hindi ko alam kung totoo yun. So, number seven. Okay, naulit na yan. Okay, number three. So, component preparation, storage, and transportation. So, itatouch ko lang ng onte. So, I just want to emphasize na each of the component has specific uh, temperature, diba? especially if you are ready to pure blood banking. At tatlo lang yung discuss ko. Ang rami pang ibang blood 
units. We have whole blood, we have pack RBCs and platelets. So platelets, room temperature 20 to 24 degrees Celsius. Ganyan talaga ang platelets. And pack RBCs and whole blood is 2 to 6 degrees Celsius. So iba na naman yung temperature pag fresh frozen plasma, mga cryoprecipitate. Yan. So, kayo na lang magbasa nun sa harmoning. So, whole blood, the standard volume should be around 450 ml, okay, up to 500 ml plus minus. Pack red blood cells, about 280 ml, and the platelets should be, should be greater than 40 ml, okay. So, notice, in blood banking storage, ang whole blood dapat 2 to 6 degrees, and pack RBCs, 2 to 6 degrees. Sabi, pag nakatransport, the temperature should not exceed more than 10 degrees Celsius. Sabi ng teacher ko noon, guys. So, dapat, pag nagre-receive ko ng blood unit that was transported, ensure that the ice is still whole. Okay? Pag melted na yung ice, dumating sa'yo na melted na yung ice. So, get a thermometer and measure the temperature. Okay? Pero as much as possible, pag melted na daw yung ice, don't accept it. Because you don't know how long the ice was melted. Okay, baka masyado na siyang matagal na wala sa correct temperature. So just to ensure, get a thermometer. Okay, so ingat ka. So kasi nga, blood units are transported. So when you will receive blood units that are more than 10 degrees Celsius or the ice were melted, don't accept it. Okay, so next component, ito rin. So what else, what are the quality that we maintain? So whole blood, dapat should be more, the hemoglobin level should be more than or equal to 45 gram per unit. The pH is uh, around neutral, 6.5. Yun. And sa pack red blood cells, ang taas ng hematocrit level requirement, 0.65 to 0.75. The platelets should, the platelet count should be around 5.5 times 10 raised to 10 per bag. The pH is 6.8 to 7.4. There should only be, ito yung quality na we are maintaining. The WBC should be less than 2 times 10 raised to 3. RBC contamination must co konti lang to less than 2 times 10 raised to 9. And there should be no visible aggregation. So for the equipments in blood banking, yan. so nagkumuha lang ako ng konti. So among our, laborat our laboratory refrigerator, anything that needs temperature control where your blood units are, Yan, kung saan mo sila finifree, saan mo sila dito, dapat their temperature should be well monitored, guys. It's daily. Back then, when I was working in the laboratory, we check it we check it four times a day. Yan, Q4. Four times a day. The, the daily, we check it, pero apat na beses sa isang araw, just to be sure. Yan, daily. Once a day, okay na rin nata. Pero yun, apat. If you want to really check, yan, walang sisihan, yan, four times a day namin siya check. So cryofuge, so cryofuge is used for the component preparation. So kung kailangan mo ng pack RB, ng, may whole blood ka, tapos kailangan mo ng pack RBC, then ng um, platelet, tapos ng platelet for, for plasma, ganyan. we use a cryofuge. I think I have a photo. So, cryofuge. Yan. Ganun mo nilalagay yung blood unit. Tapos, they would be separated in their perspective satellite bags. Yan. Yung okay, mga blood bank and freezer. Ito yung platelet agitator. Yan. So, dapat room temperature lang to 22-24. So, thermometer daily. Cryofuge, the thermometer, and the speed. Kailangan daily rin, guys. Kasi hindi okay yung pagka-separate ng component kung hindi ito check daily. Platelet agitator, the frequency of agitation. Monthly, the uh, safety cabinets, the laminar wood flow that are used. We check the air pressure and particle counter. Microbiologist na gumagawa rito three times in a month. 
Ayan, no? Galing, no? Ito, GIF. So, so, ito, blood bank freezer. We check the temperature daily. Okay? So, if it will be out of temperature, it will ruin our blood bags. Okay? Cryofuge, we check the speed using tachometer. And there's also temperature then. And the platelet agitator, frequency of agitation. Yeah. So, the agitation will reduce the chances of clotting among our platelets. So, equipment, what else? We have blood mixer. Yeah. Daily rain. Blood bag tube sealer. We check it daily. So, notice guys, may serial numbers bawat ano. Yeah. So, yung serial number dyan is yun na yung serial number ng pasyente natin. Blood transport container. Yeah. Frequ Ay, hindi ko ata napalitan to, guys. Yeah. So, blood transport container. So, we actually place ice on it. So, just assess if there is no leakage. Yeah. Yeah. Not frequency of agitation. Okay. So, check if there is leakage sa blood transport container. Yeah. So, this is your seal. So, alam niyo ba, class, sa Red Cross ata, meron namang seal sa loob ng sa loob ng laboratory. However, I don't think in when they are collecting collecting in collecting in outside of the Red Cross, I think parang pinatali-tali pa rin nila eh. Yan. So, the old school of doing is pinatali. Pero better to my seal. So, what else? So, how do we ensure the quality of our reagents? Reagents for blood typing, reagents for cross-matching. So, pag, pag manual or semi-automated. So, use according to manufacturer's instruction once again. So, look at the reagent, assess its physical characteristic, if it has turbidity, ganyan. So, dapat, kunyari, ang A, blood reagent A, dapat blue. Yan. So, pag nag nagiging green na, ibig sabihin na halo na yung yellow sa kanya, yung B, di ba? So, assess, guys, the color, if it's diluted, ganyan, or baka may, may precipitate na sa ilalim, dapat wala. Okay, number three, then your reagent has to be assessed and confirmed satisfactory. So, we could use control materials, okay? So, we could get blood. Alam na natin talaga kung ano yung, uh, yung blood type niya. So, ito, alam mo na yung blood type mo. So, get your blood. You could assess if the result will really come out na katama naman o di okay pa yung reagent nyo, di ba? The reacta reactivity and specificity, specificity has to check each new lot. Yan. So, your reagents, guys, has a lot number. Yan. All, the, all the reagents with the same lot number has the same quality, guys. So, kung the same lot number, okay naman yung, yung tinest mo ng isang lot, okay yung buong lot. So, Example, merong isang box, yan, with different lot, lot, may kasama rin sa ibang box na with pareho sila, kunyari 999, 999 na yung iba, tapos there's an error on that lot number. So, most probably, the rest of the lot number has error as well. Okay, ito naman, guys. Quality control for gel cards. So, gel cards, um, kung gusto nyo magagamit ng gel cards, automated na sila sa Batak. Yan, doon kayo mag-internship. So, gel cards na ginagamit nila, guys, kaysa sa patak-patak ng mga ABO. Okay? So, before using gel cards, you have to assess if there is change in color. Dapat neutral in color lang yan. If there are trap bubbles in the gel or the gel are already cracked, or drying na, tuyo na yung gel. There are artifacts, yan, may mga may mga particles na sa loob ng gel, or open or damaged seal. You, have, you should not use your gel card, okay? Now, how do you use the gel card? So, to use it, you need a centrifuge, okay? So, you're just going to drop your RCS, yan, yung na, na red blood cell concentrate mo. Tapos, you put na, you put drop it, tapos centrifuge it, at ito ang lalabas. Okay? So, pag yung uh, may, may 
the red, <laughs> the RCA settled at the bottom, it's negative. Okay? If it's at the top, it's a 4 plus reaction. Pag nasa baba, negative. So, dito guys, this is a, hindi ako nakakamali. Yan, forward reaction to. Forward reaction to. And this is the reverse reaction. So, pag nasa baba, negative. Nagsettle sa bottom, negative. So, negative siya for A, negative siya for B. Tapos, nasa taas, positive. 4 plus si reaction yan. So, the blood, the blood type of the patient is O positive. Yan, O positive siya. Tapos, dito sa reverse reaction niya, yan, so 4 plus sa A, 4 plus sa B. So, yan, the patient is O positive. Dito nakalagay, is... Blood group B, R, H positive. Yan. So, dapat dito sa yellow, lasa B, nasa taas. Negative yung A, tapos yung D positive. So, B positive. Yan. So, we have a control, tapos yung reverse reaction. So, pag, I think this is a, a antibody testing or Coombs testing. Yan. So, negative yung kumpe testing kung nagsettle at the bottom. Okay? So, here guys. So, yan ang pelcarid. Okay. And to use it, kailangan ng gel centrifuge. So, sabi ko nga, bili tayo ng ganyan sa UBA. Next, sample requirements and patient transfusion detail required for the transfusion reaction investigation. So, what if a transfusion reaction happened? Okay. So, Example, kung allergic, yan, biglang yung pasyente during transfusion, nagpa-flush yung face, flushing redness, hives or rashes in mild situation, severe situation, increased anxiety, wheezing, decreased BP, or feverish, may headache, tachycardia, yan. So, minamonitor natin, or hemolytic, medyo ano to, severe to, decreased BP, uh, increase respiratory rate and chest pain. So, what will we do? Next, so first is stop, stop the transfusion, but keep the lines open, okay? So, that and but keep normal saline dripping in slowly to keep the IV open. Yan. So, just in case kailangan mag inject na ng, uh, ng antibiotic or kaya epinephrine, yan. keep the lines open. Stop the transfusion. Number two, so once you already stabilize the patient, so check, clerical check, check kung tama yung labels ng bags, ng request form, tama ba yung na-transfuse na blood sa pasyente. Number three, examination of post-reaction blood sample for visible lysis. So we will extract blood from the patient. So see if the blood has visible lysis, yan. And number four, the blood container attached transfusion set and intravenous solution must be sent back to the blood bank. Section, kailangan isole, okay? And kailangan mag-cross match na laman yung laboratory. Number five, so we could do culture if the patient is has a temperature higher than 39 degrees, Yan. So, pataas ng pataas. May chills, may rigor. So, once the blood unit was returned, kailangan mag-perform ulit ng ABORH typing to double check. So, repeat everything. Yan. For blood bank, tra uh, transfusion reaction, investigation. So, guys. So, ito yung dyan ka. Yan. So, pag nasa baba, negative. Nasa taas, positive. So, A, positive siya. So, D or RH, yan, positive. This is the reverse reaction. Yan. So, pag zero, reaction. Pag doon, no, three plus. Yan. So, guys, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Bye-bye.